Hey everybody, it's Emily at ARG Schooling, and welcome back to another episode of Homeschool Tidbits. Welcome to Build Your Library's Homeschool Tidbits. Today we're doing episode 40, and our topic is Poetry Made Simple. In this weekly video series, I will delve briefly into a topic related to homeschooling, and I'll share some of my knowledge and expertise as a longtime homeschooling mother of four children, three of whom have graduated, and one who is a college graduate. Poetry is one of those things that most people either love it, or they feel like they hate it and don't understand it. Perhaps you might fall under both categories. When it comes to teaching our children poetry, we might feel like we're ill-equipped. Your bias likely comes from the way it was taught to you, and you're loath to make your children hate poetry. But I'm here to tell you that everyone can learn to love and enjoy poetry. Charlotte Mason said, Poetry is a criticism of life. So it is both a criticism and an inspiration, and most of us carry on our minds tags of verse which shape our conduct more than we know. So how can we both nourish and inspire our children with poetry when we ourselves struggle to understand and enjoy it? I'm going to give you a very simple technique. It's a challenge, really, and it's so easy and so simple that it can work in just about any homeschool method you happen to use. Just read a poem a day. One poem every day. That's it. Super simple. Choose a book of poetry and just read a poem together every morning or every evening. Don't worry about teaching the poems. We're not trying to analyze them. That's not necessary right now. Just read and enjoy. Enjoy the way the words flow and fit together, the rhythm and rhyme of the language, and that's it. It's very simple. When you've gotten into a good habit of reading poetry together every day, then you can expand upon it. You can maybe choose one poet and study their work together. I like to stick to the poem a day method, but just focus on that one poet's work. You can read about their lives as you enjoy their poetry. This will help give your children a feel for their style. When your child is a confident reader, you can have poetry readings. Have them choose a poem once or twice a week to come and read to you. Poetry also makes fantastic memory work. You can choose a poem to have them memorize and practice daily until they know it by heart. Then they can recite it for friends and family. These are both great ways to build public speaking skills. I know some people like to do the whole poetry tea time thing, but for me, I find that just overcomplicates things. I want to make this super easy. You don't need to throw a whole party just to enjoy poetry. We're trying to inspire our children, not Instagram. Just read a poem together every morning it's a fantastic way to start your homeschool day. Not sure what to read? Not a problem. No worries. I've got you covered. Let me share some of my favorite poetry resources with you. Growing up, my favorite book by far was this one, A New Treasury of Children's Poetry, collected by Joanna Cole. I'm not even kidding when I say I read this cover to cover dozens upon dozens of times growing up. I've also read this same battered copy, you can see it's held together literally by duct tape, <laughs> to my own children numerous times. This book introduced me to Emily Dickinson, Robert Frost, Langston Hughes. I love it. Sadly, it's out of print, but there are other great collections that you can enjoy together, or maybe you can find your own copy of this on eBay. Poetry Speaks to Children is a fantastic collection. And it's also relatively short, so it's not that intimidating. This is a great, gives you a great range of poets and styles. One of the things that I especially like about this particular book is that it comes with a CD that you can listen to, so you can have the poems read to you, and many of them are read by the author of the poem themselves. This is a great starting point if you're new to poetry and you don't know what to do with it, and you don't know where to start. It's varied. It's a fun collection, and it will help you 
Introduce your family to poetry painlessly. Words with Wings, a treasury of African-American poetry and art, is doing double duty here because this gorgeous collection is both poetry and art appreciation. There is stunning artwork included with every single poem. I'll show you guys a few pieces here. So you can enjoy your poetry with a side of art. This is also a fantastic collection to pair with your American history curriculum. A Kick in the Head, an Everyday Guide to Poetic Forms, is a really fun collection that gives you a poem to read for various poetry forms. These are wonderful to inspire your children to write their own poetry. You can read a poem together, discuss the form, and then try your hand at writing your own poem in that same form. When you're ready to delve into individual poet studies, you cannot go wrong with the Poetry for Young People series. There are many to choose from. Um, my daughter and I are currently reading this one, which is Maya Angelou. So what I really love about the series is that they give you a really good feel for the poet's work and style. And they also include a biography that you can read together. So what I like to do is sort of divide that biography up in chunks. And so we'll read a section of the biography before we read the poetry each day so that by the time you finish the book, we have learned about the poet's life and studied their work. My final recommendation is one that's for you, particularly if you feel like you're averse to poetry. And that is Why Poetry by Matthew Zapruder. And I promise, if you read this, it will help you to find the beauty in poetry again. Zapruder believes that poetry is for everybody and that it doesn't need to be dissected, nor do we need to be made to feel like we're not smart enough to understand it. His book really helped me to find a love of poetry again, and it even inspired me to pick up a pen and write my own poems, something I have not done since I was a super angsty teenager. <laughs> poetry does not need to be complicated or challenging. It can just be a beautiful and simple way to begin or even end your day. I hope that I've inspired you to read poetry with your children, and I challenge you to read a poem a day together and see what that does for your feelings towards poetry. I cannot promise any miracles, but I can guarantee that you might find a newfound appreciation for poetry. If you found this video helpful, I hope you'll check out Build Your Library curriculum. Build Your Library is a secular, literature-rich homeschool curriculum inspired by Charlotte Mason's philosophy of education. Based on nearly 20 years of homeschooling, I have created the curriculum that I wish I'd had when I started homeschooling my children. I have spent thousands of hours cultivating the best literature to enhance your child's studies. Our lesson plans make homeschooling simple. Just open up, gather your books, and go. Our easy-to-use lesson plans include everything you need to homeschool. Just add math. Choose from our full year K-12 levels, as well as our fun topical unit studies and our newest product, Lit Bites. With Build Your Library, you will cultivate a home library filled with captivating literature and you will raise children who become lifelong learners. So snuggle up with our lesson plans and a good book or three and have your best homeschool year ever. I hope you found this tidbit to be helpful. Let me know down below in the comments, what is your favorite poem? I would love to know. My favorite poem by far is one that I've loved my whole entire life, and that is Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. I've been reading this poem both to myself and aloud since I was a small child, and I'm gonna read it to you right now so you can end this with a poem to enjoy. Jabberwocky. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the boar groves and the mome raths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jujube bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree and stood awhile in thought. 
And as an uffish thought he stood, the Jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy, O frabjous day, kalu kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the bar groves and the mome rats outgrabe. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to come back next week for more homeschooling inspiration. Until then, happy reading. Bye.